A good friend of mine just lost more than 50% with a trade, despite a stop loss order. How is this possible? He made a huge mistake that you can easily avoid, if you know about it. In this video, I'll explain you how. Hello Couch Investors, my name is Till and this is the channel that shows you how to invest intelligently and easily and how you build up a fortune also as an ordinary person with a normal job. This is an actual case that happened to an old friend of mine. He gave me the permission to make a video about this, but he asked me to not mention his name. So let's call him Robert. Robert bought stocks of the company CureVac. You may have heard of them in the past months. They had developed a vaccine against COVID-19 and were quite hopeful of a success, also in the clinical studies. After he bought the stocks, Robert wanted to prevent his trade from major losses and he set a stop loss at 75 euros. A stop loss order is in principle something good that should help you to avoid exactly the situation that happened to Robert. You can imagine it like a kind of an ejection seat with a parachute. When your stock comes into trouble and goes down, it will shoot you automatically out of it so that you're not going down with the stock. People often set their stop loss order a certain percentage below their purchase price. When the stock price is going below a stop loss of for example minus 15 or minus 20%, an automatic sell order is triggered so that the loss of the investment will be limited. On June 16, 2021, CureVac published a message and reported after closure of the stock exchanges that CureVac's first generation COVID-19 vaccine candidate demonstrated an interim vaccine efficacy of 47% against COVID-19. That was significantly less than expected. On the 17th of June, I received a text message from Robert. Hey Till, the stock of CureVac dropped massively overnight. I replied, hi Robert, are you invested? Yes, the stop loss was triggered, but the trade happened just in the morning at the opening of the stock exchange at 31 euro 40. I'm facing a loss of 4,000 euros and didn't have any chance to react. Can you tell me if this was really correct? I answered, unfortunately, yes, and I explained him why. What's even more painful is that the stock price went up again to 50 euros just a short time later that day. The mistake Robert made was not that he wanted to gamble. I believe that he was very much aware of the risks of his operation. The major mistake was that he used the wrong tool. You can drive in a nail with a screwdriver, but it won't work that well and something might break. And accordingly, there is another tool existing that would have fit much better to this investment. The stop limit order. A normal stock loss is going to be triggered if the stock price falls below the set value. If the next price is 80% below the stop loss limit, it will be sold for 80% less. The stop limit order is slightly different. It also triggers a sell operation when the price falls below the value. But you have to set a limit value as well, which means that the sell order will only be executed if the price of your stock is above the limit. If Robert would have used this tool instead and had set additionally to his stop loss of 75 euros a limit of let's say 60 euros, the stop limit order wouldn't have been triggered when the stock price fell to 31 euro 40. What's important to have in mind is that the one tool isn't better than the other. A stop limit order isn't better than a stop loss order. It's crucial that you apply them for its right purpose. And this means that you need to think about beforehand which risks and situations could happen with your investment that you would like to mitigate. If you want to know which other tools there are and how you apply them, I'm going to create a video that will tell you exactly this and that I will set a link to somewhere here above as soon as it is ready. If you like this and if this video helped you a bit, it would be really great if you would support me by clicking the like button. Thank you. And if you want to know how you calculate compound interest super easy in your head, you should definitely check out this video here. 
see you in the next one.